Hey Potters, how are you? A couple of announcements before we get this video started today. Number one, I just did my store upload at earthnationceramics.com. I want to say maybe four or five days ago, but I'm really bad at telling YouTube. Instead, I opt out to tell my patrons and Instagram and Facebook all the time for like the next three days after I do a store up post. But I realize a lot of you are j just exist on YouTube, essentially. YouTube is your TV just like it is for me. There's a bunch of new stuff up on the website and I have lowered all of my prices. I do not want mugs costing more than $60, even with shipping, because shipping's included in all my stuff. So I lowered all the prices by about four or $5. If you want to get something, go ahead and go to that website right now. The store has at least half of the stock left because the first half did sell in the first day. The second thing is that this video is sponsored by Clayscapes. We started kind of a little deal with them and they sent me a bunch of glazes that we're gonna start testing on the channel just like we did with the good old Amico glazes. The only difference is Clayscapes gave us a discount code. So you can use this discount code to get Clayscapes glazes just like we're testing in today's videos in increments of five, 10, 20, and even 50 pounds of powdered glaze and get some pretty good glaze just by being a dirty potter with me and using this discount code at checkout. Everyone in the comments below say thank you, Clayscapes. Okay, on with the video. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Welcome to another glaze review. For those of you who are not familiar with my glaze review videos, we take glazes off the shelf, we test them on white clay, brown clay, we put them in the kiln, and we show you how they're gonna come out before you even take them off the shelves yourself. I'm very excited about today's video because we have a new company on the scene called Clayscapes. A lot of you are probably very familiar with my Amico glazes that I've been doing for quite some time, but today is a new chapter in the Earth Nation Ceramics channel and that we start with the company Clayscapes. The interesting thing about this company is that on top of selling the regular assortment of glazes they do sell amico glazes and others as well they also sell their own brand of glazes but they sell them in powdered form the truly fantastic thing about this is that they're not paying for the shipping as far as the water and the bottle that they'll be selling you as well that little plastic bottle that i have tons of in my studio because i don't know what to do with them and i don't want any more because of this, you're getting way more glaze at a way cheaper price. Imagine the bottles of glaze that you buy in the stores. Usually they're in between $15 or $20 each for a pint of glaze. And a pint is generally about 400 or 500 grams. It's around a pound of glaze. Clayscapes has a large assortment of their own branded powdered glazes that cost anywhere in between $30 and $40. But the difference is that you're eating five pounds. You're getting four to five times more the glaze just because you're not paying for the bottle and the water that comes with it. You just mix it up with your own water at home, and this way, not only do you get way more glaze, especially if you owe something like a studio, you also get a little bit more control over the viscosity and the specific gravity of your glaze by just adding the amount of water you want. So I went to Inseca 2023, shook some hands, had some dinner with the owners of the company, met some of the employees, sniffed each other's butts like the good dogs we are, and they have sent us a large assortment of their glazes, all in five pound increments. So I am proud to say in today's video, we are testing Clinton Red from the Clayscapes Company. The only truly negative thing about glazes that come in powder form is that you have to put them through a sieve. I, of course, because I make my own glazes, have some really good sieves, so I could just put them on top of the bucket and sieve them through. And the fact that you have to add water, but for those two five minutes worth of work, you essentially get four times the amount of glaze, if not five, for the same exact price. And I hate bottles. I hate that part of my brain that tells me I could save the bottle and use it for something but also like, no, I can't really, cause I'm gonna rinse it out and recycle it anyway. And then you end up being that artist that has an assortment of empty plastic bottles because you swear you're gonna use them one day for something, but you never do. So now you just look like a bottle hoarder. I'm pretty much done mixing and y you know what? I'm 
I don't know if I'm gonna sieve this. It look it looks pretty good as it is, to be honest with you. I generally don't I genuinely don't know if I need to sieve this, because this looks this looks like an already sieved glaze for some reason. Which is very strange to me in my experience. Usually you have to sieve a glaze if it's handmade. But it they must have something extra in here. Oh, he's not using a power drill! He's not using an emulsifier! Because I'm better than you. It's because my wrists are stronger. It's because I am mm, stronger than you. I'm just better. I am better! Plus, you you might be older than me and have like carpal tunnel. Realistically, you might you might have something wrong with you. I'm not trying to shame you, but I don't use blenders. Because I'm not weak. This is a lot of glaze. I'm not gonna this is this is a two-gallon bucket. If I was a studio owner, if I owned a studio whatsoever, I would be buying these glazes just because I get so much more than buying little tiny bottles. Either that or I'm producing my own glaze and bottling them myself, which I would assume takes more money than doing this. You know what I'm gonna do just for a test? I'm gonna test one thing without sieving it, and then I'm gonna sieve it and test one other thing. And then these two here, this kind of serrated form here will be our standard porcelain textile. And this one over, let me see, this one over here will be our standard redstone textile to see how it comes out on a red clay body. So we'll do all four. And just for consistency sake, just for one more, I'll find another textile for you and I'll paint it on with this brush right here, because I know there's a lot of you who still paint your glazes instead of dipping them. Even though this is a fairly large amount of glaze. If I were you, I'd be dipping with this much glaze. It's faster, it's better, it's stronger. I am just better. better! Okay, so I've already measured the gravity. It's at 1.23 or 1.24. Sometimes it kind of differs based on how my, my gram scale is feeling today. I don't think I need to sieve this but just for intellectual consistency, because I sieve the high majority of my glazes, especially if they're from powder to water or handmade, I'm going to sieve it anyway. But I am interested to see how well it operates without the workability of a sieve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to glaze this one right here, which is a recycled clay body. It's mostly being mixed with grog with no sieve glaze. And then I'm gonna sieve this whole thing and do it one more time just to see if there's a difference. Because I think moving forward, I would love to know if I really need to sieve Clayscapes glaze because I don't know I feel like they have something in here that kind of takes care of the whole sieving situation But we're gonna find out at least with this one glaze if I truly need to sieve this glaze Okay, this is the non glaze sieved bottle. We're going to put this over here, and the rest of the tests from this point on are all going to be the sieved glazed version. Don't you want to live life? Don't you want to Okay, and as we usually do, let's go over what we're putting in the kiln before we put it in. So this here is a non-sieved version of Clinton Red from Clayscapes. This is on a B mix with no grog textile. This is 100% that glaze. There's nothing else but that glaze on it. And there's a tiny bit of texture right there just to see what it does. 
This here is a porcelain gourd. It has lots and lots of texture in it. I think it's a pretty good form to see what this glaze does over texture. It's also a porcelain clay body, so we get to see it in its purest form. This is also glazed 100% in Clinton Red Cone 5.6 mid-range from Clayscapes Pottery. This is its counterpart, although it is just a red clay body instead of a white or porcelain-like clay body. This is purely to see how it performs on a red or redstone clay body, the more darker iron saturated clay bodies. And finally, this one right here is the non-sieved, brushed-on version of Clinton Red from Clayscapes. So many people have started to request that I do a brushed-on one, that I've just started to get an assortment of brush for brushing on glazes. I hate brushing glazes. It's awful. It wastes a lot of time, and you don't get as much consistency in your glazes, from my experience. That being said, I know that a lot of you do still brush your glazes for either space reasons or otherwise, whatever reason, they're your reasons. So I've started to do one just for you. So this is the sieved, brushed on version, and this red here is technically floating blue. And I wanna see what the red and blue do as a combination. I felt kind of bad mixing an entire batch of only one glaze just for texture and to see what the sieved versus non-sieved version did. So I threw, so I threw a little blue over there off camera. I threw a little, little bit of blue. All right, let's put them in the kiln and see how they go. Okay, now that everything's out of the kiln, let's take a look. Firstly, let's look at that small bottle that I didn't sieve anything on. I really want to see what happens when I don't sieve or if I sieve extremely poorly. There's two primary things that I'm noticing as soon as I get this out. Number one, don't take this as the full glaze because I did this very poorly on purpose. I've always been taught whenever you get powder glazes to sieve or mix them with some type of blender or something like that. I didn't do that at all. I just added water and like whisked it around a little bit. So this is purposefully a bad product right here. But there's two things I noticed right out the gate. You probably noticed them too. Number one, these big dots here that are majoritively unsieved are the things that are mostly turning red, which makes me think they are the thing that make the red, which also makes me think this is why this didn't get almost any red, is because the chemical that turns red is all left clumpy instead of suspending the rest of the glaze in the water like it should. Number two, and this is something that I do personally, a little sneaky sneaky, is I generally dip the entire thing and I don't wanna dip it a second time to mess up the results. So I brush the bottom on. I did notice that the bottom in which I brushed on for some strange reason, turned a bit more red. Now this is either for one of two reasons, generally speaking. The brushing either works better, or this is just getting more heat at the bottom, and this is just turning it a bit more red, which is fantastic, because this is the color that I think a lot of us suspected. This is just a regular old B mix clay body. Let's move on to that porcelain gourd. That's what I'm talking about. So this is a double humped Japanese style porcelain gourd that I've carved through that I just put one good dip of the Clinton pottery red glaze on from Clayscapes. This is fantastic. I notice as it runs a little bit into the texture, it turns a bit more red and I'm sure you're seeing that too, which makes me think maybe I should put it a bit thinner. I did dip it upside down so it's not like this part here got to the bottom of the bucket and the other part didn't. This seems a bit more thin. It's, it, I bet if I did a little bit more experimenting, I could probably figure out how to get the entire thing red, but I'll, I'll tell you a little secret. I was digging for this exact glaze recipe for a very long time. If I had the ability to get a nice kind of celadon-like gray that turns red in textures maybe a year ago, I would have been the happiest boy on Santa Claus's lap because I really wanted that for Christmas. 
when I first got this out of the kiln, I thought, okay, so anything with texture, it'll turn more red than gray, but anything a little bit more smooth, it'll turn more gray than red, which is fantastic. I, I really like the entire glaze by itself. I would actually love to develop something like this. I would love a face separation glaze that is majoritively gray, but within texture turns this type of red, but um, I'm, I'm done developing glazes for a while. I already put the glaze on glazy, I'm, I'm done for a bit. But I'm gonna keep using this glaze. This is a beautiful glaze. You can really see down the fluted parts of the gourd where it starts to turn red. That type of pomegranate. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm gonna put help you me. on the website. I'm yes, I am. Yeah. 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 This one here is just for you brush heads out there. This is a bee mix with grog clay body. I brushed this on. I put about four and a half coats on this because after that I got tired and I didn't want to brush anymore because I can feel moments of my life wasting away as I brush instead of dip. I'm pretty satisfied with the brush versus dip variations of this. It came out relatively the same. As a disclaimer, and I know I say this all the time on other glaze reviews, but I hate whenever they give me a test aisle and the test aisle comes out nothing like the glaze. This comes out majoritively like the glaze. I am getting the colors they promised me. That being said, I'm getting more gray than I expected red, but I, I'm super into the color gray and I really like the fact that it's separating into the textures as some type of red. And you can see that very clearly on the bottom of this cup. Wherever it pulls or any place where it gets a bit more texture, it seems to turn a bit more red, especially on a white clay body. Let's check out the brown clay body. Now this thing is beautiful. I really like this on a darker clay body. It's kind of difficult to see it because I have my light up here and that's creating a shine, right? And the sunlight's creating shine. And then I'm, I'm trying to get any type of lighting in the studio so the door's open. But you know what, let's, let's see if we can take it over here. This turned gray, right? And this is white. Okay, all right. And this one over here, is porcelain, okay. Notice, just from experience, that the white clay body it turned white and the red clay body it turned a bit more brown. This is extremely common for glazes that have tin and chrome in them. I have a glaze called June Perry is Purple that I made. I think Joe Thompson is the one who created it or somebody named June Perry, I'm not really sure. But I got this glaze from Joe Thompson, AKA Old Forge, called June Perry is Purple. And this glaze is very similar to this. I still have the test style over here where if you put this glaze on a white clay body, it turns that nice good purple. But this is the same clay. And you notice it's turning this type of gray. So I think, I think at some point, this glaze does have some type of tin and chrome in it in some variation. But they are clearly way better at developing glazes than I am because I, I prefer this over June Perry's purple any day of the week. I also have a bit of a surprise for you. On top of these three testers, which you saw me do on screen, I, I cheated on you a bit. I cheated a little bit, I cheated on a little bit. Okay, I did it for us. Okay, now that I know, okay, that I'm not in love with them, I'm in love with this one right here, now I know who I can stay true to. But if they were, if they were better in the sack, you would have been in trouble. I have these three teacups here that I also tested Clayscapes Clinton Pottery Red on, and they came out pretty good. Just a quick overview, this one is my Lao Gai Green with Clinton Pottery Red on top of it. The green completely overtook this glaze. I mean, it, it gave it no chance to survive whatsoever. This entire thing essentially turned green, except for this bit of texture at the very top, which I assume is from the Pottery Clinton Red because my Lao Gai Green does not do that.
Yeah, you like that? You like that little thumbprint right there? Yeah? Yeah? Ergonomic. Yeah, word of the day. Ergonomic. Yeah, welcome to class. I'm pretty sure this one was Clinton Pottery Red on top of Lao Guy Green because I did the reverse as well. This one here is Lao Guy Green on top. This one here is Lao Guy Green on top of Clinton Pottery Red, and it made a much better texture. So the clayscapes glaze, you can clearly see here, has little bits of red. It's on the bottom of this brown clay. It turns gray just like the other test style or the other cup. But you can see right here, the green was like, oh, we can work with this. And just kind of started to go over it and just make something a little bit new. I think I did this one in reverse, actually. So I'm pretty sure I did the entire thing in Laogai Green and then put Clinton Potty right over it. Nothing happened to this one whatsoever. But putting a little bit of Laogai on, on top of it is it's good. It's good. Just let this be a bit of a lesson in layering your glazes because this one here is Lao Guy Green and then Clinton Pottery Red is on top of it. And it essentially did nothing. It made the green a bit darker actually. It's very hard to see that it is even green, but it, it is green. This one right here, I put Clinton Pottery Red on first and then put Lao Guy on top of it. Just just halfway, just to see it would affect anything. And it um it looks way better. These are completely these are two completely different effects for the price of one. The real awesome one though, is this one right here, which is Clinton Pottery Red from Clayscapes with my Lumos glaze. I put the entire thing in Clinton Pottery Red and I just, I just gave it the old, just straight in there. I left the inside alone, so the entirety of the inside is just all Clinton Pottery Red. While the outside, I, I did a little claw. This is not a big foot, so I got some finger strength going on. But I did one of these, and it turned it turned out beautiful. I'm, I'm going to put this in the shop immediately. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining us today. If you like these types of videos or you want to see more Clayscapes glazes, please leave it down in the comments below. I'm sure we will get more glazes from them. We could test combinations. Big shout out to Clayscapes, by the way. I met them at Enseca and they agreed to do a little bit of a promo with me. I really, really like this glaze. I'm, I'm actually going to continue to buy this glaze after I run out. And I'm starting to teach classes in real life pretty soon. So I think, think if my students are lucky, I might, I might bring some of this glaze over there because, you know, while I do love this glaze, I want to share the wealth. Plus, I mean, look how much I got. Look, that's how much I bought. It's, it's almost two gallons of glaze. And it costs this much. How many, how many pints can you get for this amount? This, like, why would I, why would I even buy, <laughs> why would I? Thank you for your patronage.